Hello, my name is Jonathan Hinkle, and I'm a Distinguished Systems Architect for Storage at Micron. Today, I want to talk to you about the key foundations and feature of memory, industry standards, which are set in the JEDIC Standards Organization. JEDIC is a global industry standards leader and develops open standards for the microelectronics industry. JEDIC published and maintains thousands of open standards and publications across all segments, has hundreds of member companies, thousands of volunteers, and a variety of different technical committees and task groups. Still, with a large organization, all are welcome to join and participate in this critical industry work. JEDIC standards are available for download at JEDIC.org. JEDIC has a fast and flexible process for getting standards done while still ensuring the integrity and allowing for each member company to have a vote in the process. There's a variety of different main committees uh, for the technical work within JEDIC, and that's really the core of where things move forward for industry standards. There's subcommittees for specific topics and then task groups that meet regularly for the detailed work and hashing out the details within the industry. For the memory related committees, these are the main committees where a lot of the memory is all standardized in the industry. JC11 uh, for mechanical, JC16 for interface and signaling, 40 for digital logic, especially the, the logic that goes on to memory modules. JC42, which is where all the solid state memories are standardized in the industry, including DRAM, NAND flash, and all non-volatile and, and volatile memories for the most part. JC45, where DRAM modules uh, using those memories are, are standardized. JC63 with MCPs. And JC64, where there's embedded memory and storage uh, and removable cards, such as um, UFS and also SSD-related standards. I want to highlight a few recent noteworthy standards that, that we've developed in JETIC. DDR5 which is really a next generation performance memory, especially for compute. LPDDR5, where there's further improvement in efficiency for low power memory and higher performance. And then CMM, the industry's first CXL memory module specification that we just recently published with Ingetic. So first I'll tell you a little bit more about DDR5. Now DRAM overall, the market is huge. 221 billion by 2030, with a CAGR of like 9% or more. Along with NAND, DRAM is one of the two key commodity memories that's used everywhere in computing and electronics. Uh, client systems and data center systems are the two main use cases for DRAM, and for, especially for DDR5 as well. Data center where you have servers, storage systems, hyperscale, or the cloud, um, you have a variety of different requirements that are really about the highest performance and the highest capacity. And then client systems where cost and also the, the power and, and battery life that you can get from a mobile device are really critical. So the main characteristic for DRAM is really performance. Um, memory is coupled to some type of computation and it's really about getting the data to the processor as quickly as possible which is low latency. So that low latency access is, is really the most important piece of the performance, but also it needs to have high bandwidth. So it can move more massive amounts of data to the processor, especially as they keep getting faster and the core counts keep going up so that you can feed those cores. Another critical capacity, uh, another critical factor for DRAM is capacity. Uh, capacity is really important just to be able to store the larger data set that you might need next to the processor so that it doesn't have to go to storage. Over many decades, uh, fab process shrinks have made more and more space in the silicon, and DRAM die density has consistently grown. DDR4 DRAM is able to achieve up to 16 gigabits per dot. Um, as you see, there's a continuous uh, sort of according to a certain uh, process that we expect to see usually, uh, Moore's Law uh, improvement uh, with DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4 for capacity. And then as well, you see that same type of, the same type of curves for the interface improvement, which is really the speed of the interface to the memory, uh, which really relates to bandwidth. Uh, so we keep seeing improvements in the size, the capacity for memory, and we keep seeing the speed and the performance of memory grow up as well. 
Unfortunately, there's some challenges for this continuing the way it has, uh, which has been true, but even more so today. Uh, DRAM capacity, uh, whereas you know, we've seen um, you know, the need for you know, sort of still keeping on that exponential curve, uh, this slowing, you know, there is some slowing down of how much the capacity has increased. Um, and then also we've had some uh, performance challenges where you can't run the speed of the memory quite as fast uh, if you have a large number of modules on a single channel. So there's some variety of different ways that overall we're, we're hitting some barriers with our current DDR4 technology. And the implications, especially for the data center, are that we just can't keep pace with the large explosion of data as it just continues. And as we want to process large amounts of data now, especially with AI, we just can't get through that data uh, quickly enough. We can't get access to that data quickly enough for the processing. And also for client, uh, without higher capacity DRAM, then you have to have more chips to satisfy the capacity they need. And if you have more chips, it's going to take more power. Uh, so we need lower power. We need higher capacity so that we can keep at least to maintain the same battery life or make it better. So just in time, DDR5 has been introduced. We've introduced that in JETIC uh, within the past year. And DDR5 really enables higher performance. So you get higher signaling rates where you can see here on the top graph, you have DDR, uh, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4. Now DDR5, we can get that higher bandwidth. The challenge with that, though, is not just turning it faster and figuring out those challenges, but also the utilization of the memory channel, the way that the protocol was providing um, both the data transfer and the overhead with it, um, you know, it was starting to slow down how much data you could, uh, you could transfer at a certain rate. So for DDR5, we greatly improved the utilization, the efficiency of the channel so that you can get more of that data delivered uh, from the memory to where it's needed. Also for scaling, DRAM has uh, had the same challenges as a lot in the industry as far as uh, semiconductors overall. And the fab scaling to smaller and smaller process nodes is very, very advanced, which calls it to have a little bit more of a lossy characteristic. So to help with that, there, we've developed Ondai ECC, which allows for further process shrinks and doesn't drive higher costs. Um, also, there's core timing changes to improve the design scale. So we want to continue to improve capacity, we want to continue to get that um, next bump in density to the die of DRAM. Um, so adoption in DDR5, uh, we really see that this will be uh, really meeting that next generation needs, really starting even now as DDR5 is launching. And um, we'll see further terabytes of memory capacity now while we're not sacrificing performance and we're satisfying what the processors all need. Um, also for client systems, they're gonna become even more capable and even more efficient, um, being able to go at a higher speed and maintain the power on board that they need. So the industry is now in the process of adopting, pretty much now shipping DDR5, and um, we're enabled the next generation of computing systems with this standard. So LP DDR5, is also another important standard I wanted to give you a little bit more information on. LP DDR5 is LP is low power. Um, it's really a focus on meeting mobile applications, smartphones and tablets, and some even laptop PC as well in client space. Um, there's LP DDR4 and now LP DDR5 um, that have been really broadly successful. Uh, we reduce the idle power and we allow for that capacity and performance while not increasing the power uh, for the for the most of the time that it's running. Um, usage and applications really vary from 5G, which now is, is really widespread in multiple media applications. Um, so we still need that performance for a variety of different applications that need this low power. Um, and so that's where the speeds are going now for LP DDR5. We're going to 6400 and beyond. Uh, the LPDDR5 architecture, just quickly, is a simplified die architecture. So we've actually seen from DDR, learned from LPDDR4, LPDDR3, and so on, previous generations, where there's been real adoption, where there's been the, the strongest needs, and tried to, to make it optimized, continue to make it optimized for the actual applications where it's being used. Um, we've done a variety of different things in the package, um, the ball out, and the, the number of um, pins uh, for data transfer. And then also we've um, improved the addressing 
um, to allow for up to um, 32 gigabits per dot. Um, again, lower power consumption, so a lower voltage rail uh, than LPDDR4, and also some dynamic supply voltage controls to lower uh, lower the power overall when, when it's uh, only ramping it up when it's needed. Uh, for the LPDDR5 architecture, it's really a flexible architecture now where we have programmable bank organization, the byte mode, and a by 16 mode. Um, so it, it can operate at a smaller granularity, a high, high reliability functionality, and um, a variety of other low power features. Again, reducing the data transfer when it's not needed, clocking uh, optimized power. And um, overall that's enabled by a high data rate friendly clocking system um, that can speed up and speed down. Also, there's a variety of flexible training schemes so that it's more easily adopted in systems while still maintaining support in the same form factors LPDDR4 uh, with a package on package, MCP, and uh, FBGA. Another standard that I wanted to especially mention now is the CXL memory module that we've developed in JETIC, the first industry specification for a CXL memory module. Uh, the industry really needed to align to define a few specific implementations of CXL attached memory. And JETIC formed this task group to focus on that and figure out where can we get to a first few top uh, targets to uh, help everyone just to first develop systems that are compatible and also broaden uh, the supply chain for the, the known quantities, what we know we want to plug into systems. Uh, so this first industry standard is called JESD317. And um, these CMMs, CXL memory modules, leverage the SNEA SFF, EDSFF device form factors um, and align with the uh, already defined pinout uh, for NVMe drives. So it allows for you to actually plug into, should be compatible with all the slots uh, for the most part, uh, if you can enable CXL in those slots. Uh, JESD317 standard modules support 2.0 CXL uh, with the interface and by four and by eight uh, interfaces. Specification is now available. It's published as of March of this year, 2023, and it's available for download on the JETIC website. Um, the two types of modules in the specification, I'll give you a little teaser, E1.S and E3.S, there's variants of those, uh, specific implementations and described in full of really sort of more of a black box approach to start, um, but JETIC's continuing to work on this exciting new standard. Okay, so some more uh, upcoming work that I wanted to highlight. Um, again, CXL memory task group, we're gonna continue to further define uh, interesting uh, memory standards for CXL um, related to memory. And then PIM, uh, processor memory, another interesting technology that we've been working on, as well as MRDIM. And I think you're gonna hear a lot more about this um, pretty soon, it's not quite published yet, but um, you've seen maybe a few details that have started leaking out. It's really meant for high bandwidth PDR memory. Um, and it's a module that allows for um, you to, to greatly increase the amount of bandwidth uh, that you can uh, attach that DIM on the channel. So very, very interesting space uh, coming soon. And please, again, uh, if you have interest, uh, please come join us. And uh, you're more than welcome to uh, come see what's, what we're doing in JETIC. And that's it. Thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate it.